Um, so I want to talk to you about the state of the MediaWiki community, which sounds really impressive and fancy, but that's just because I want a really inf impressive and fancy sounding title. Um, so hi, I'm Chris. Um, I'm a recovering Wiki MediaWiki admin. I worked in a healthcare organization for four and a half years. I was a I'm a member of the MediaWiki stakeholders group as a volunteer, and in 2016 I joined the Wikimedia Foundation as a community liaison, which means I work with our product teams and technology teams and our communities of volunteers around the world to make sure they talk to each other and translate developer language into user language. Um, I like cheese and I'm also lactose intolerant. This slide contains humor. Um, <laughs> warning, this talk is incredibly subjective because I'm speaking from my own perspective as a human being, but I try to be as factual as I can. Um, however, I'm also flawed because I only have one perspective and that's the perspective I currently have. So if uh, in my slides, you, which you can find on the um, uh, program on, on MediaWiki.org, um, I try to share as many references and notes as I can in my presenter slides so you can make up your own mind about the current state of things. But this is kind of how I see things and how I kind of think things are in general. Oh yeah, by the way, that's the organization I work for. So this is what I'm going to cover really quick. I want to cover four things. A little bit of history, particularly for new people or people who haven't been in the movement, uh, the MediaWiki community as long. Um, some of our challenges, some things I think that are just missing, and um, some, some ideas that we can do about it. There is a, particip a participation aspect to this. If you go to my um, session, there's a link to an etherpad, and I'll talk about that in a second. So that's what I'm going to cover. So the first off, we need to talk about some history. So I have to put a space joke in here. So this is um, the development of the uh, universe as we know it, starting back about, um, you know, 300 and what millions, it's 13.7 billion years of time here, so haha -ha joke, it's history. Okay, I'm kidding. Um, but I do want us all to be on the same page as far as the history of how things have gone. So let's talk a little bit about MediaWiki history. Um, so MediaWiki was first created as a media, as, and called MediaWiki back in 2002. It's actually the third incarnation of the software that runs Wikipedia. Um, in 2005, Semantic MediaWiki was a thing, became into, came into being. Um, Lots of good stuff happened in between here. These, these little squiggly lines are. I don't have enough stuff to put in there, but I kind of want to mention the beginnings. And then lots of stuff happened. And then more recently, starting in around uh, uh, 2010, we had the first Semantic Media Wiki conference, official one, or, or you know, called Semantic Media Wiki conference, in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, then we had Wiki Apiary starting in 2011. We had Wikidata as a project. And for those of you who aren't familiar, Wikidata is the closest thing I could describe to Semantic Media Wiki in the Wikimedia proper, right? It's, an, it's a way of organizing data and ontologies and so on and so forth. Um, so that started in 2013. And then in 2014, the Medi MediaWiki Stakeholders Group, as Cindy mentioned in her, in her presentation, was started. And also in 2014 is the first time I went to a Semantic MediaWiki conference where I met folks like Mark and Yaron and uh, Cindy and, and a few others. And so that's kind of when I started getting involved in it personally. And then in 2015, we, uh, the MediaWiki stakeholders group put together this MediaWiki user survey. We presented it at the Wikimania 2015 in Mexico City, where we kind of presented uh, to the community there the first kind of survey of what are people doing with MediaWiki? Who are, the, who are downloading it? Um, um, what, are they do, what, are they, what are they using it for? Everything from, as we know, from NASA to Cirque du Soleil to GE to NATO um, to the small a relatively small um, healthcare provider I work for. I, you know, people using it, who are they, where are they at? At the same time in 2015, uh, the foundation started a team called Developer Relations, uh, which, turned into which turned into the technical, te technical collaboration team, which, is I'm, which I'm part of. And Developer Relations was kind of the first initiative to kind of say, hey, we need to start doing outreach to find, retain, and support uh, volunteer developers in our movement. Um, not specifically MediaWiki, but related to MediaWiki. And then in 2016, we had our first EMWCon, so the Enterprise Media Wiki Conference, which was in New York City, hosted by um, Wikimania in New York City and uh, you, right? I'm, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, uh, and also in 2016, we had our CTO. So at the foundation, for those of you who don't know, the foundation um, hasn't had a CTO for a while. <laughs> And we were lucky enough not only just to find somebody, but we found Victoria Coleman, who brought a much needed um, sense of stability and knowledge to that position. And with her in, in position, we led into things like the next EMWCon, which Cindy hosted in Washington, DC. And then obviously the MediaWiki product manager, which is Cindy, who we just met a few minutes ago. And so having these, um, these roles kind of filled, we were able to start doing more work around MediaWiki as a thing and trying to support it with a little more structure 
in 2017, also TechCom uh, renewed their, or should revise their charter. And again, all the notes to what I'm talking about are in the slides. So if you're like, what's a TechCom? You should find out what a TechCom is. Um, actually, they have a really nice newsletter they send out every time they have a meeting where you can read the meeting notes of what they're talking about. And in advance, you can find out what the RFCs are, which are requests for comments. So this is how you can participate in what's, what sort of technical decisions are being made um, in and around MediaWiki. So heads up there. And we have things like the code of conduct for our technical spaces. And uh, last, just last year, we started a discourse pilot, which uh, for those of you who don't know, discourse is kind of a message board solution. It's a little more contemporary than something like a mailing list. Um, it's not quite like Slack, but it's a very useful way of um, providing a place for developers to go to ask questions about MediaWiki and the surrounding technologies. It's a pilot, um, so it's still on labs. It's not official, but it's one way we're, we're trying to say, we have a whole bunch of different places to talk. How can we kind of consolidate some of those? Um, and then actually, I'm kind of surprised um, Cindy didn't mention this, but also just recently we had this great thing, which is um, the aggregate pingback data for MediaWiki. So starting in a version of MediaWiki about, what, two years ago that, that, I, that land on MediaWiki? A little over a year ago. So a little over a year ago, there's a fe an opt-in feature in MediaWiki now where we actually get some statistics about um, MediaWiki. So we can see things like what version are MediaWiki, of MediaWiki are people running out there in the wild? So these are third-party folks such as yourselves. If you opt in during installation, during an upgrade, um, or setting a configuration change, I'm assuming, um, you can give us, give us being the community, um, information on what you're doing. So things like database type, PHP version, operating system, so on and so forth. And we can get this aggregate data to say, hey, you know, we want to make a decision about what version of PHP we support, or who, are people adopting the newest version of MediaWiki, or are they not? Um, and sort of kind of provide more context around what's going on in MediaWiki. So there's a lot of things happening, I guess is what I'm trying to get at here in the history of things. And then here we are today, right? So we have this conference now being the third one of its kind, where we can get 40-something people in a room from or literally, literally around the world to discuss the future of things. And there's a whole bunch more, right? We have things going on. Oh, yes? Uh, just for a brief thing, I want to say, I, I think MediaWiki proper didn't come around until 2003. Oh, OK. And I mention that because we're going to have a, a little bit of a 15th anniversary celebration. OK. <laughs> you're making it up or you're, you're fibbing the numbers. That's my fault then. Okay, I'll correct it. Um, and we have lots of new things happening. Um, for those of you who don't know, I, uh, as a volunteer, I help put together a somewhat quarterly newsletter of things going on in the MediaWiki world. And one of the things I've, some things I've learned about recently that are kind of interesting is that there's a Wikibase user group. So there's a user group of people who are using Wikibase which is kind of interesting. That's a Wikibase being the thing that runs Wikidata, which is in some ways, but not quite similar to Semantic Media Wiki and other sort of structured data uh, um, software. And we also have things like uh, the podcast between the brackets, which is an interesting sort of thing that happened. Our community is healthy enough to support a podcast about itself. So that's kind of an interesting thing to think about, right, as far as our growth and our maturity goes. And the stakeholders group, as I mentioned, um, we also have a really great dashboard that um, my coworker Andre is working on, which provides some analytics on uh, community health and community activity, and we can see things like commits and who are they are, who are the commits and chain chats and emails and authors, and we can see things like, hey, isn't this interesting that according to these statistics, which take them worth a grain of salt because they're numbers, um, it looks like about half of our contributions are actually coming from independent folks, not coming from the foundation. So. In a lot of contexts, folks seem to think that the foundation does all the code commits, and this sort of data tells us, no, actually, we look at this, and we're actually less than 50% of commits to, to MediaWiki and, and uh, other related um, applications. So again, a little bit of history. Where, how, where we've been and where we're going to, I think, is really exciting. Uh, let me find my mouse cursor. However, I don't think everything is perfect. Nothing is perfect. So I want to talk about some challenges. And I'm going to list a few challenges here because I tried to present a somewhat professional presentation and do a little bit of homework. But like I said at the beginning, things are subjective. So I'd like to encourage you, and I'm thankful for Lex for reminding me of this. I did this last time I presented it at EMWCon. I'm, I want you to join me. So if you go out to this URL, or if you don't want to type in URLs because that's old school, um, go to the hyperlink on my session uh, on the event, and there's a link to this etherpad. And if you open this etherpad, what you'll see is something that looks like this. And these are the, these are the bullet points I'm going to go over here over the next few slides. And they're the ones that I've entered in here. Um, an etherpad is basically an open source version of Google Docs, 
but no Google watching over your shoulder. Um, so you can, you can type anything you want in here. If you click on the icon up in the top right corner, you can name yourself if you want. But the general gist is here, I want to go over some of these challenges with you, and I want you to share your own in this document with me. And at the end of this presentation, what I hope we have is not just the few bullets I'll show, show here, but is a collaborative, collective understanding of what our challenges are, um, what are some things that we can, what are sort of some things that we are missing, and what are some things that um, we have opportunities to improve on. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. Again, I'm trying to be considerate of time here and, and give a little bit of time for lightning talk still. So here's a few challenges that I particularly think are worth noting and worth mentioning here in front of you all. Um, I think finding and getting involved in the community is rather difficult. I think we are a dispersed group of people from many different backgrounds, and you might go download MediaWiki, and you're like, great, okay, now what? Who do I go for help? Where do I go? How do I find stuff? Where are people talking? Where are people meeting? Um, online, offline, asynchronously, synchronously. I think we really struggle with that. I think that um, a lot of the foundation resources are focused on MediaWiki, or sorry, focused on Wikipedia and, and the other projects, and that leaves little time for MediaWiki as a thing on its own, right? So um, as Cindy mentioned, you know, we have a lot of folks at the foundation who would really love to give a whole bunch of time into making the um, installation of MediaWiki process smoother, but nobody at the foundation is running MediaWiki that way. Nobody's installing MediaWiki by going, clicking through the installer, right? And so that falls to sort of secondary time or 20% time. How can we change that, right? How can we advocate for that? I think there's also a little bit of a language barrier or maybe a cultural barrier. Like, we did that report in 2015, and we found out that the number one country for downloads for MediaWiki was China. But I'm pretty sure I don't have anybody who's a representative of the Chinese country here who use MediaWiki in China, right? So where are those people? Why aren't they here? How do we reach out to them? How do we find them? Um, I think it's an opportunity there, but it is a challenge for us. How do we find them? How do we reach out to them? How do we connect with them? Um, and as I mentioned before, we don't have a single place to congregate, right? I am, I am actually in my volunteer time. I'm an admin for the MediaWiki subreddit. So if any of you are on Reddit, there's actually a subreddit for MediaWiki. It's not very active. But people go there and they ask questions. And they're like, hey, how do I do this thing with this thing? And like, it's crickets because nobody's there. And then some people go to the discourse because they stumble across that. Or some people go to a talk page for the extension and they post something, but the extension author isn't paying attention and it sits out there. And then you know, some people come to these conferences because they hear about it. Some people don't, right? So I, don't, I think we have a challenge there where we don't have a single place maybe not a single place, maybe less places or more easily identifiable places to go and congregate. And I think that um, it's really hard for me as somebody who also volunteers in other open source projects. I'm, a, I'm active in the WordPress community. Um, WordPress community is a great thing. Is, is, I think has it easier, quite frankly, because they are a one-to-one -one or one-to-many kind of relationship where they create the software and a whole bunch of people can go out and create a whole bunch of blogs or a whole bunch of websites for anything from insurance to personal blogs to travel guides to the whole nine yards. Whereas wikis are a little bit more like we create one wiki for this large group of people, right? Not everybody in this room has a wiki for themselves. You usually have a wiki for your organization or a few wikis for your organization. So I think we have a challenge in that way of trying to find people and trying to grow our, our base is that we will never have you know, WordPress numbers of, of people involved in our community because not everybody's going to have a wiki. Although, if you want to start that, that, that campaign for that, I'm all for it. But I think the nature of a wiki is a little bit different than other sort of open source programs where people usually use them on a one-to-one -one or um, um, a different kind of dynamic, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And the last one, and this is um, being a little critical of myself and my friends as volunteers in the MediaWiki stakeholders group, I think that uh, as kind of leaders of the third party or, uh, community, we really need to show our value to partners. And by partners, I'm really meaning the, Medi the MediaWiki Foundation. I think we need to show stronger why we sh they should listen to us and why they should work with us and why that our concerns and our thoughts when, when we give them and we have an opportunity to participate should be listened to. Um, I think we have a challenge in doing that for lots of these other reasons, we're fractured, we're, we're, we're busy heads down taking care of our own problems and instead of our own organizations. Um, but I do think it's a challenge that we need to face. So I'm hoping you're typing things in. I'm gonna, I'm, I don't know what's going to happen here. I hope there's no profanity when I click back over. But I think there, so I hope, yeah, so I hope there's some, some good challenges here. And um, if we have time later, maybe we can talk about some of these offline. I'd love to hear more about what some of the challenges that are out there. And please keep adding them. This document is live on the internet between sessions tomorrow, throughout the week, afterwards. 
um, please continue, continue adding them. Oh, should I? Yeah, it might be a little more legible, huh? OK, so those are some challenges. And thank you for continuing to add. I appreciate that. <clears throat> now I want to talk about a few things that I think are missing. And these are things that I did, maybe I'm not aware of, or maybe you all agree with me, or maybe you disagree. So please let me know in the etherpad. Um, I think some things that are missing is stronger liaison, lia, liaison, I, that's not a word. I can't even say that word. I should know that word. It's the title of my job, right? Um, so stronger relationship between the foundation and the community. I think this is happening. I think obviously um, five people from the foundation being at this event is a good strong indicator that we are listening and that we do care. I think the fact that we have, not only do we have APM uh, for MediaWiki, a platform, but the PM also happens to be somebody from our community and also happens to be here again. I'm talking just about Cindy, not to put too much pressure on you. <laughs> but I think these are all positive, strong things that we, we are doing, but I think there still could be more that can be done, right? Some more things, more formal like Cindy's position and us attending the conferences. Um, I think we have opportunities for more people, um, a third party presence in decision making with regards to MediaWiki's future. And I have high hopes for this as well, but historically, when we go to things like TechCom or IRC office hours, the representation of folks in this room is rather low, right? And maybe that's, again, part of not having a strong relationship is maybe we're not doing enough advocacy to folks like you and saying, as a foundation, saying, you need to come to this. This is a really important topic. We need your voice to make this decision about whatever it is we're doing on a, from a technical perspective. And I think, again, I think we should talk more about the things that we do well. So better publication of the work that we're doing, right? The better we can share our stories, the better that we can support one another with great examples of best practices, things you shouldn't do, things you're working on that work well. Um, the more we can do that, the more we can support each other and create a more healthy environment. I feel like that's missing a little bit. Um, I loved the five-year retrospective, or I don't know what I want to call it, that NASA recently put together on MediaWiki. I don't want to spoil anything if you're all going to talk about it, but you should take a look at that. And I think we should have better stats, which again, I think we're working on, but I would love to see more there. And I know we have to balance privacy and anonymity with um, how we do things in our movement, but I would love to know more about how people are using it. Why are they using it? What are they doing with it? Um, why didn't they go with SharePoint? Or why didn't they go with some other's platform? Um, and how did they get started? You know, that sort of a thing. I'd love to know more about those sort of stories. And again, to help, help um, Tell, tell a better story, a better narrative about why people use MediaWiki. And again, some more kind of little things, like too many an unanswered questions on talk pages. You know, I go out to look at a talk page, and there's some questions from six months ago, and the person has a technical question. Did they get that answered? It seems to me that they didn't, and that seems to be a sign of mm, an opportunity for better health in our community when people go out and they have a question, and again, we are figuring out ways to support them. We don't necessarily have to answer everybody's question, but at least can we direct them to some venues that aren't empty, essentially or ignored. And things, I think things we all think uh, are pretty, good, pretty missing. Uh, better installation support, um, the external, oh, the eternal better extension maintenance support, right? With kind of a, uh, every time I think I come to one of these conferences, it's always a topic. We'd love to be able to click a button and have an extension be up, installed or updated. And then often um, the thing we always come back to is documentation, right? More consistent documentation, figuring out ways to improve it and making it more accessible to folks. I think these are all great things that we are missing, and I hope you're adding more here. Oh, okay, no more, huh? All right, I'm wearing you out already. But please, if you have more ideas on what's missing, please add those. And uh, last but not least, I want to talk about some opportunities. So, so what can you do, right? So some of these things are going to be obvious based on what I've just talked about for the last few minutes, um, but I'm going to share them anyhow. So. I want to see more participation. Um, I really want to encourage folks to, to find the time to participate in these discussions, to find the venues where we are having the conversations, which I link to a lot in the notes here, like TechCom being a really big one to start with, um, and like the MW Stake monthly meetings, which happen online via, we use a program called BlueJeans, which is like Google Hangouts or Skype. And um, those events are great opportunities to kind of just get in the know what's going on in the communities and connect with other people. And getting more folks involved means there's more people, more brains, which means we can distribute the work that needs to be done to, to address some of those challenges and address some of those missing things. So I think it's a great opportunity. I, I, I also think that we probably maybe should do more events, maybe more regional events, maybe smaller events, maybe events, maybe events that aren't so general. I mean, and this is a pretty general one. Maybe we talk about 
I love what, what we did in, in DC where we had an entire panel of people who were just from the United States government. And they came and talked about what it's like to use a wiki in the United States government, right, in a particular industry, for lack of a better word. And um, I think we also miss out on having lots of diverse voices involved. I think I hinted at this before. You know, we have the pingback stats, and the pingback stats, while not perfect, tell us that are over there are over 40,000 media wiki installations and, and count, counting as it goes up. Um, so where are those people? Where are those 40,000 admins, right? Where are those 40,000 people? And I know it's probably not 40,000. It's probably smaller than that. But where are they? Um, um, where are the folks who are in the rest of the world, the non-North American, the non-European folks? Um, how do we get them involved and how do we find those more voices? Again, more brains, more voices. It can only improve our, the health of our community. And I think also think we should figure out ways to do more part partnerships with, um, with like-minded communities, right? Um, my experiences, again, subjective, my experiences have been I talk a lot about wikis at wiki-related events, but I don't talk, talk a lot about wikis at non-wiki-related events. So where are we talking about wikis when we go talk to the folks in our industry who do knowledge management? Or we talk about folks in data management because we have a wiki that helps our data management team. You know, where are we advocating for the use of MediaWiki outside of these sort of already existing uh, communities? Are there other open source programs and projects that we, we, we can work with to encourage them to adapt wikis or adopt wikis or get part participate? I know Mozilla has uh, or had um, a very useful wiki. Where are they at? I haven't heard from them in a while. What's going on with their, with their wiki? Are they still doing it? Why aren't they coming? You know, you're nodding your head yes to me, but you know. What's going on, right? They recently upgraded it to the LTS, which is about to go out of life cycle. <laughs> right. So they um, need to be here, right? They need to be here and have right. a voice and, and, and discuss things with us. So, so again, I, I'm going kind of fast um, because I wanted to give a little bit of time if we have some time for lightning talks and still get us out of here. But I kind of wanted to give us a good summary. And I wanted to get, uh, if we can just spend just a few minutes, if you have any thoughts or questions, um, I'm here to listen. But thank you for your time. I appreciate it. So is there any questions or any, th any thoughts you wanted to add? Uh, just, just a thought. Uh, I, I've worked in a community that, if you've been in the healthcare area, you know about HL7, uh, the, the standards organization, mm -hmm. which is pretty big. The, the, what, one idea is to have organized special interest groups that, that, that can be smaller communities. This is a very wide subject area. Yeah. And, and I, I think it deserves some special interest group focuses that, that could be done from the, the MediaWiki level down to groups of people then that are just maybe email or, or wiki uh, no, that's areas a great idea. that are special interest <laughs> groups. Uh, and, and I think that, that that might generate some more participation. That's a great idea. So starting some SIGs that um, would be about accessibility or about use in healthcare or about particular, particular sort of smaller aspects of things that are a little more targeted. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, you, you mentioned the ways that you're communicating with people, but I'm curious how people want to be communicated to and what they would look for. And, and I know that, you know, we can't support all, you know, we can't support everything, but I'm wondering if there's things that we, we should try to reach people and we're not doing that, or ways that people would listen mm -hmm. and they're not. Yeah, so I think one of the limitations we have, maybe it's just a part of our maturity as a, as a community, or and I think it's also part and partial with our history as a, a very considerate community of folks who don't want to you know, suck your name into a bunch of databases and you know, sell it to a whole bunch of other people and spam you with a whole bunch of emails, is that um, we have to rely a lot on putting our stuff out there and hoping people find it right now. Right, so you know, I do the MediaWiki stakeholders news roundups every few months, and I go out and I grab links from mailing lists and from, uh, you know, monthly ch monthly conversations. Or Cindy sends an email, and she mentions something happening. You know, I grab I grab all this stuff and I put it together. But my only option is to put it on MediaWiki.org, put it on Twitter and Facebook maybe, and then hope people f see it. Right. So I think we need to be a little more thoughtful on how do we kind of, you know again, respectfully, appropriately ask people to, hey, would you like to get notified next time we have a thing that happens? Whatever that thing might be, right? Um, and figure out ways of communicating folks in that sort of, in their, in their inbox, unfortunately, because that's where, gonna, would, where they're going to see it. It would be interesting to ask people in this room right now what they would look for, how they want to be communicated with, if there's something that, you know, maybe, maybe they want to be on your mailing list. 
Sure. Subscribe to your newsletter. Let's, uh, let's so for time's sake, let's, um, if we can, if you can, somebody just add a section somewhere on the Etherpad and just start writing down how you want to be communicated to. I mean, like, if you have ideas, just drop something in there that says, uh, I, like, I like newsletters, I like mailing lists, I like Facebook, I like, Telegram, Telegraph, whatever it is we're using for this thing. Um, whatever it is, and maybe we can kind of figure out if there's some sort of general consensus on um, a good place to go. I am Groot, thank you for that. Thank you for that. I'm glad, I'm glad we kept it PG though. Uh, so that, maybe that's a good idea, if we can get some ideas for that. That's a good way of, good way of continuing the conversation. Podcasts. What, sorry, looking, what? <laughs> Okay, um, I, this, is, this is actually something I've been uh, wondering ab about for a while, and uh, it's all right if you don't have a specific answer for this, but is there an example of a decision made at the Wikimedia Foundation that could have turned out differently if there were more involvement from the enterprise MediaWiki community or outside MediaWiki yeah. people? Um, it was a couple years ago, but a really good example would be the one, and I, I was impacted by it as a third-party user myself, um, it was, uh, I think Mark, you eventually fixed it with an extension, but it was um, MediaWiki itself for the longest time would keep track of how many times a page was visited. It was basically just a counter, right? Page lo on page load, increase counter pl plus one, right? Um, but it was really useful internally to the organization I worked for to kind of value, to kind of say, hey, which pages were, were most visited or most popular, and we can kind of talk to people about that. And it was just built into the MediaWiki, so you could put it in the footer, and people could see it. This page has been accessed 200 times or whatever. And the decision was to remove it from MediaWiki core because, again, the, the Wikimedia movement, they don't do that. Like, we don't have that running in production anywhere. It would just be, this number just be spinning like an odometer, right, sort of thing. Um, so I, I think that was handled, it ended up being handled okay, I guess, but it could have been improved because there was some frustration from third party folks who were like, they went, they didn't know that it was gonna be removed because they didn't read the release notes or they, didn't, they weren't participating in the mailing list. It was you know, a, a single thread on the mailing list for one month. And then the next time they go to update their wiki, the way that it was handled is that the wiki actually, I think, nuked that database, right? It just, or nuked that table, just dropped that field. So then you go and you're like, I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing the good thing. I'm updating MediaWiki. That's the good thing we want you to do. And you click the update button, or how, not quite that easy. Um, and then all those stats just disappear. And you're like, oh, oh, I'll roll back. Or I'll go find that in the database. And you're like, oh, sh uh, no, it's not there anymore. So yeah, that was kind of a very frustrating thing as a third party person that could have been handled better, I guess. <laughs> Thank you for the perspective, Ryan. <laughs> uh, is a question in the back there? Right. Right. So that's a disadvantage we have as an open source you know, anybody can come, anybody can join communities, that we don't have any sort of tech evangelist or any sort of person who can go around to conferences or user groups or other meetings and say, hey, I heard you're gonna use Atlassians, whatever their thing is. You know, have you heard of this open source product? It's actually probably better <laughs> and it's free and there's a whole community behind it and, oh, by the way, it powers the fifth most popular website in the world, you know, it's probably okay. Um, there's nobody doing that work right now. I think it, it, we might be a little bit further away from that, but it's not a bad idea to have somebody who could reach out into those sort of professional organizations and professional places where people are making decisions, particularly leaders making decisions on products to purchase or to, or to, or to support. Um, it's very interesting to me as somebody who used MediaWiki instead of organization, I think this is true in lots of people's experiences, 99% of the time I hear stories about how it started as a computer under somebody's desk who ran MediaWiki and it kept growing and kept getting adopted and it survived six different failed attempts to upgrade SharePoint and next thing you know it's the thing everybody uses inside the organization. 
And that story, I think, is great, but that story is uh, very frustrating and wrought with lots of problems, and it takes many years, in my, again, my experiences, for the wiki to go from being this thing to actually being the thing, right? And how do we help new people go from zero to 60 a little faster, I think, is a great idea. Okay. Uh, just a quick observation. I don't, I don't really have stats to back it up, but I wonder, um, you know, there's thousands and thousands of MediaWiki installations out there. We know that. We've got stats for that. Um, and we know MediaWiki is an open source project, and you can download it for free, and you can get on a mailing list and do stuff. But I think, I, I, I wonder how many users of MediaWiki actually realize that their input is wanted or valuable and where can they go to, to, to ask questions or demand you know like I would like to see this because you know like I think that uh, many 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 users feel like their kind of only option is well patches welcome they can get in there and they can fix stuff and they can build extensions but do they have a voice and where is that collective voice yeah no, that's very true Oh, I get to talk again. Um, <laughs> um, no, I, so yeah, what, what Greg just said about having a place to go and what you were saying about having no single place to go, um, kind, and, and the foundation starting the discourse server kind of frustrates me in, in a sense because there is a place that people go and it is populated. It, it may not be huge number of people, but at least it's advertised on MediaWiki.org and that's the support desk. And people do go there and there are support people hanging out there and answering questions. Um, and I, I know that, I, I'm sorry, I'm just getting frustrated now, I'll stop. <laughs> no. um, but it, I, I think that there are places that people go and it's on a wiki and that's where people look for answers. I agree, dead talk pages are a problem, um, but I, yeah. Anyway, people are out there, they're listening, they're responding. Yeah. How do we harness that and make it a better, bigger thing? I agree, I, and maybe discourse is a red herring. Maybe the solution is maybe we need to do a better job of supporting the places where people are congregating now um, and being aware of them and you know, improving the, that flow, right? So what, what if, here's a, here's a crazy scenario really quickly, what if, if somebody posts something on a talk page in the extension namespace and it's not replied to in X time, a ping gets sent to some user group of people who care about support requests and they can come in and help? Ooh, you know, and you know, that wouldn't even require Wikimedia or anybody to do anything. It just takes the motivated person to write a bot to watch the talk pages and sure. say, you know, take note. Yeah. Someone needs help. Right. So you know, maybe we maybe we need to do better at if if the support desk is where people are at, and why aren't we talking to those people? And maybe we haven't. Maybe we haven't. I just don't know. I don't so know. Is there Because we advertise everything there, and so you get you basically get the link to download the software and eighty other links to everything else you know about MediaWiki. And how do you determine which one's the one I need to go to next? Right? I, I, I think, think we have the support desk hierarchy. probably is mentioned there. It is probably, probably, yeah, yeah somewhere in there. I, and then you I go to the support desk right? and you learn about discourse. And anyway, <laughs> stop. <laughs> okay, someone else should talk. Actually, I, I think I think I should probably stop now and tell everybody to find me afterwards or over the next few days. But again, thank you for your time and thank you for the comments. <laughs>